A simple way of getting students engaged in learning is using QR codes. QR codes can be scanned using a QR reader and do a myriad of different things. Most frequently, a QR code can take the user immediately to a website. It can also prompt text such as vocabulary, an essential question, it can launch a video, it can open a document. QR codes can be made on a computer and on a mobile device such as an iPad. To make a QR code for a website, simply copy the web address and then go to a website that will convert it into QR. We're going to use qrstuff.com because it is free and it works on mobile devices just as easily. In the second section, simply tap and paste in the web address that we copied previously and press go on your keyboard. The website automatically generates the QR code. We can now save it and download it whether we're on a computer or a mobile device. This could then be printed out, stuck on the door, or inserted into a presentation. In the first workshop, we saw the potential of Padlet as a tool for collaboration. To make a Padlet board, Simply sign up for free at Padlet.com. Give it a title, a subtitle, choose a background, decide on the layout. Stream is recommended to prevent comments overlapping with a large group. And you're ready. Notice that by default the board is secret, so only people who have been granted access will be able to contribute. To share this with other people, you have different choices. You can email them the link, or Padlet creates its own QR code for each board. You can also embed the Padlet in a frame in Blackboard. Students simply open a QR reader, such as iNigma, scan the QR code, and they will then follow the link to go online. Now, everyone who has access can contribute. It may be worth pointing out to students that they can click on the Share icon if they're using their mobile devices and add the link to their home screen. This will make an app-style shortcut on their devices so they can return to the board instantly. So what happens if someone writes something inappropriate? You may wish to remind students at the beginning of a session about the acceptable use guidance that they all signed and which is also available as a shortcut on their devices. Many lecturers have commented that after the initial excitement students do seem to settle in to using things like Padlet for more useful purposes. One other suggestion, if you're going to use Padlet in a session or beforehand, log into a computer. As the author of the board, you have the ability to delete comments that are not directly related to the session. You may want students to contribute before a session, you could take a screenshot and paste this into a presentation. So you're not using Padlet Live, but you are referring to contributions made before the session. There are online services such as Google Docs and OneDrive, which allow you to create documents and share them with others for dynamic contribution. You can have many people working on a single document at the same time. 
they all work in a similar way. Simply create a document and for this example we're going to use Google Docs. Click on the sharing icon and add in the email address of people with whom you wish to contribute. You can also assign individual people different rights. It might be that you have one person who is the editor and responsible for making changes to the document whilst other people have the ability to make comments which are then reviewed and approved by the editor. Students can also be encouraged to create documents and presentations and collaborate together. What one thing will you take away from this session? Thank you for watching and when you're ready why not watch the third video in the workshop series where we will be exploring ways of assessing student understanding using mobile technologies.